over at YouTube. We're gonna launch into this right away. I'm trying this on camera. This is called Keto Cookie Fatty Goodness. This was sent to me by the company, Keto Cookie. They just direct messaged me. They said, would you be willing to try this and give a review on it, good or bad? And I said, yeah. As many of you, actually, maybe just a few of you might know that I have dabbled in low carb diets quite a bit. I'm a friend and a fan of low carb diets when they're done correctly, usually by the help of a coach. And people have asked me my opinion on low carb diets and like the long and short of it is that I think that they're perfectly healthy when they're done correctly. I think that there's so many great benefits to them. I love low carb diets, but they're just not usually maintainable for most people. I know some people who go low carb and then they never go back. They're totally fine with not really having like carby stuff for the rest of their life or just like very few carby things and they're fine with that. I personally love carbs and I love to eat them all the time and I don't like to limit myself so I don't know if that would ever really be like a lifestyle to be super duper low carb but anyway so this cookie is in bits and pieces because I threw it in my bag and rattled it around like an idiot. This is part of it. You see them chocolate chips? I've already taken a few bites of this and I'm gonna use a word that y'all are gonna be real mad at me for using but this cookie is moist. It's like a brownie almost. It's super moist. And it's like, it almost tastes like buttery. Like, like melt in your mouth buttery. The top ingredients are blanched almond flour, erythritol, which is a sweetener, almond butter, sugar-free chocolate chips, grass-fed unsalted butter, egg. The ingredients on this really are not bad at all. There's not that many of them. Definitely high fat at 21 grams of fat, but if you're on a low-carb diet, chances are your fat is probably pretty high. Back in competition prep, when I was on 30 grams of carbs a day, my fat intake was 80 grams a day. This would have fit right in. Now it says that there's 21 grams of carbs. Um, dietary fiber, I think technically has some calories in it. I want to say it's like 1.4 calories per gram. There's five grams in here. They'll usually like subtract the five grams from the total amount of carbs and that, they'll say whatever's left is net carbs. Um, and then there's 13 grams of sugar alcohols. Now some sugar alcohols do have calories. So don't believe the like net carbs thing that you see and them only counting the calories of the net carbs because some sugar alcohols do have calories. I happen to know that in particular erythritol, I'm pretty sure doesn't have calories. So they're actually cool on this. And this is only one gram of sugar, which I like. In terms of flavor, this, I'm just going to compare this to the Lenny and Larry's cookie because that's really my only, like, thing that I can compare it to. I almost like this better. In terms of, like, texture, the Lenny and Larry's cookies are kind of, like, a little bit harder. They're not, like, usually super duper soft. This is really, really soft. It's really, really soft, and I like it. I like it! Right now I'm going to the grocery store to restock my fridge because I feel like there's absolutely nothing in there and I need groceries, so here we go. Oh, and one last thing about the cookie though. I will say that this, even though I'm not on a super low carb diet, this would still be like a valuable snack to me because during the day when I'm gonna be going through long stretches of time where I'm not gonna be able to eat, such as school, like I wake up at four or five in the morning and then I'm not out of school until like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. If I'm eating every two hours because I'm hungry, like in that time though, I'm gonna I like eat 1500 calories by 12 o'clock and the day is not even half over. Fat is slow digesting and it slows digestion down in general. So what I like to do is have a lot of like pro high protein, high fat stuff in the morning and kind of save my carbs for the afternoon because when I start eating carbs, I said it recently, I just get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. But if I can keep carbs out of my diet the first half of the day and I just stick to like high fat, not only will I not be hungry, but then I can like save all my carbs for the later half of the day, which sometimes means I can have ice cream for dinner. Okay, now we're gonna go for real. Cheese is obviously very important to me. Asiago, feta, and Munster. Starbucks is also important to me, especially when I go grocery shopping by myself. Got my normal order of Americano with sugar-free peppermint and sugar-free mocha. The lady at Starbucks was like, wow, getting Starbucks with sugar-free syrups is a really good way to take all the carbs out of it. And I was like, Oh no. So I definitely plan on getting some cauliflower and I got two dips for my cauliflower. This is new to me. I've never even seen this before, but it's a yogurt dip, smoked onion and parmesan. And it's like, well, it won't focus very well, but it's super low calorie. I like that. Y'all always be yelling at me because y'all say I don't eat green stuff. Look at all that green stuff and white stuff and yellow stuff. Look at that, micronutrients. Um, excuse me, you're not allowed there. And you know it. Get off the table, get them. Get them, get off the table. Get off the table. Oh, you're too fat to pick up. Ugh. All right, I decided to try a new recipe because 
Yesterday's chicken that I made ended up turning out really, really well. I accidentally overcooked it a little bit, but next time I won't overcook it and it will be amazing. So I'm gonna include that in like the weekly rotation of meals. Look at me go, you guys. You remember when I used to not cook at all? Y'all remember those days? I remember those days. So right now, I have something in the crock pot that I found on the internet, except I like loosely, completely changed around the recipe, so I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. But they call for a whole chicken that you're supposed to cut up and put in here. No, no, I put in just chicken breast. Also, you're supposed to put in, it's like a brown sugar garlic recipe, kind of similar to yesterday, but it's like brown sugar, minced garlic, some seasonings, chicken, a little bit of lemon lime soda, which all I had was diet lemon lime soda, which probably makes a huge difference because it's fake sugar instead of real sugar, but we'll find out. Also, it, wanted, it called for two tablespoons of soy sauce. I don't have soy sauce. So it's not in there. And then it called for two thirds a cup of vinegar. I hate the taste of vinegar in my food. So I put a little bit less than that and it still smells really vinegary. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna find out. And if it's disgusting, then I guess Matt is gonna have sandwiches tonight. But the effort is there, so A for effort. Okay, right now I am hungry for a snack. So I have my cauliflower that I should probably just chop up myself and save a ton of money on, but I don't want to. And we have my, I'm trying two different dips today. We've got this Oasis completely non-fat, zero fat roasted red pepper hummus, which makes it super low calorie, which I like for dips because I like to be a little generous with the dips. And if they're like more than 25 calories a serving, it's just gonna add up real quick. But this is hummus with zero fat, which means it kind of just looks like a puree that like jiggles, which is not how hummus is supposed to be. Let me see. <laughs> ah, don't spill. So we have that and then we have this Chobani meze dip, smoked onion and parmesan. So that sounds amazing, but I, when I like was checking out, I was kind of realizing that sometimes Greek yogurt dips can kind of freak me out a little bit. I don't know, it's like the, I don't like plain Greek yogurt on its own. It really grosses me out. So this might be just like gritty Greek yogurt, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna try it with my cauliflower, which by the way, this is one of my favorite study time snacks. I've noticed that when I'm really struggling to like stay focused while I'm studying, eating something while I'm studying helps so much. And so obviously if you're just like mindlessly snacking while you're studying or doing something like that, you can end up eating a ton of calories without even meaning to or wanting to. Like it's not even about hunger. It's just like about keeping your hands busy. So this really helps me. I can eat a ton of this and it's really not that many calories. So here we go with the, is this roasted red pepper? What was this? Roasted red pepper hummus. That's good, that's good. It definitely tastes a little bit healthier than normal hummus, but I can get down with that. Mmm, it smells really good. It smells like a Parmesan ranch or something. Let's try this out. Mmm, oh, definitely good, definitely good. It's really thick, like you would imagine, like if you were to just open a thing of Greek yogurt, that's how thick it is, and it's really strong. Like a lot of flavor, more than I was expecting, but it's good. Sometimes I like to chop up cucumbers to dip and stuff too, so. Oh, goodbye, Lynette, goodbye. Okay, so this recipe I tried out, so good. I'm gonna put the recipe or the link to the recipe, one or the other, in the down here. Not that this is like the star of the show or anything, but it turned out real good. And I just added some cooked noodles, so it kind of is like a spicy garlic honey broth bowl. Ooh, honey would probably be a good addition. Um, Kind of like a broth bowl, which is not really Matt's favorite, but like I didn't really know what to do with this. There was a lot of like broth. So, and I added some half and half to try and thicken it up. I know I would, I know I should have used like cream, but I don't have cream. I only have half and half, which did not help the thickness situation, obviously. I don't know why I thought that it would, but the flavors of this is amazing. I know that you guys have told me different ways to thicken up soup base, but I don't have any of the products that I know that you guys have recommended before, so. I think I'm just gonna let this sit here when until Mac gets home in a few minutes and then I shall hope for the best. But anyway, so I did record a couple hours ago a home workout, a leg day home workout. I know, amazing. And I am eating my words of what I said during my upper body workout the other day that I can't ever get a pump when I'm at home for glutes. I lied. I have the biggest glute pump and my butt is so sore. So I'm gonna end this vlog with the workout footage and like my little voiceover explaining what I was doing. And this is a home leg workout, by the way, in case I didn't mention that. Okay, all right, well, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. That's all I've got. All right, so just starting out with my hip circle that I mentioned in my favorites video. I love doing jump squats with this. It just kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. 
And now I'm doing regular, I guess you could say kind of goblet squats, goblet squats with a 15 pound kettlebell. Again, this really just forces me to engage my glutes a little bit more while doing a squat by having that hip circle around my knees. Next, I'm doing one of my all time favorite leg workouts, just reverse lunges. Everything that I'm doing today, I do in a circuit. So I just do one exercise and then move on to the next one and then repeat after that, if that makes sense. I do all like 10 exercises or eight exercises in a row before starting over. Now this is one of my favorite exercises just to get my heart rate up and to also engage my glutes. Um, I do two squats and then I do two kettlebell swings. And I love this, it gets my heart rate up and just really, really engages my glutes the whole time, which I really like, obviously. Next we have some good old fashioned kickbacks with the slingshot which is amazing and then I, right after I do a few kickbacks I go right into pulse kickbacks which is going to burn baby burn. Believe me, my butt was on fire after this. Next we have just some skaters, I think that's what they're called, just to get your heart rate up a little bit. Just always looking for ways to get my heart rate up that are a little bit like less impactful than perhaps like jump lunges or anything. Uh, here is a reverse lunge kickback, I guess like a stationary reverse lunge kickback. Just doing everything I can to burn the booty at home, which is going to be a ton of kicking back and reverse stuff. Last exercise here, just uh, jump squat in and out like that just to get my heart rate up again. And that is it, you guys. <laughs>